Hello students, myself Dr. Anjali Reji, Assistant Professor from Department of Public Health Industry, Vinayaka Mission, Shankaracharya Dental College. Today, I will be presenting on the topic, Concepts of Prevention, under which I will be covering various levels of prevention of diseases and the modes of interventions involved. What is prevention? The word prevention itself says, pre-event action, that is, the action of stopping something from happening or arising. Disease prevention involves with certain actions or activities designed to protect individual or a population from actual or potential health threats and their harmful consequences. Why is prevention important? It is important so as to preserve health, to restore health when it is impaired and to minimize suffering and distress caused due to diseases. In modern day, the concept of prevention has become broad based and can be studied under basically four levels namely primordial prevention, primary prevention, secondary prevention and tertiary prevention. First, let us see what is primordial prevention. It is the prevention of emergence or development of risk factors in a population in which they have not yet actually appeared. It focuses on addressing the root causes of diseases to prevent the development of risk factors. It is based on as early as possible intervention that support health and well-being of an individual or a population. The intervention can be done by individual or mass education. Let us take the case of an example. In primordial prevention, efforts are directed towards discouraging children from adopting harmful lifestyles like smoking, wrong eating patterns, lack of physical exercise, etc. so that they do not develop many adult health problems like obesity, hypertension, lung disease, etc. in their future. So, what we are doing actually? We are preventing the emergence of risk factors in a population in, in which they have not yet appeared. Coming to primary prevention. Primary prevention to define it is an action taken prior to the onset of disease which removes the possibility that the disease will ever occur. That is the actions are taken before the onset of disease event. So as we discussed earlier, primordial prevention deals with prevention of emergence of risk factors whereas here the primary prevention deals with the elimination or modification of risk factors of disease as the risk factors are already present. For example, suppose we are giving a tobacco cessation counselling to a person with smoking but before the actual development of any lung disease, it is a primary prevention. Here even though the lung disease has not yet developed, the risk factor that is the smoking is already present. So the primary prevention signifies the intervention in the pre-pathogenesis phase of a disease or health problem. It includes the concept of positive health, that is concept that encourages the achievement and maintenance of an acceptable level of health that will enable every individual to lead a socially and economically productive life. The WHO has recommended mainly two approaches for the primary prevention of diseases where the risk factors are actually established. They are the population or mass strategy and high risk strategy. Population or mass strategy is directed at the whole population irrespective of individual risk levels whereas high risk strategy of prevention aims at individuals at high risk of disease. High risk strategy follows a medical or clinical approach and is considered appropriate to the individual level. Persons identified as at risk are likely to adhere to interventions to reduce the risk for the development of more serious diseases and hence high risk strategy of prevention is often found to be more effective. Primary prevention is achieved mainly through health promotion and specific protection. The first component of primary prevention entails health promotion activities that aims to enhance the overall health and well-being of the general population through a variety of interventions. It includes health education, environmental modifications, nutritional interventions, lifestyle and behavioral changes, so and so. The second component involves specific protection measures. It targets particular disease or health events to prevent their occurrence within specific areas or populations. The use of vaccinations, the use of flu rides, use of pit and fissure sealants for caries prevention are all examples of specific protection that is it is targeting a particular diseases, prevention of occurrence of a disease. Next is secondary prevention. Secondary prevention can be defined as an action that holds the progress of a disease at its incipient stage and prevents the complications. It can be applied where the natural history of a given disease includes an early period when it is easily identified and treated. This allows the interruption of the progression of a 
disease to a more serious stage. Appropriate secondary prevention strategies require safe and accurate methods of disease detection, preferably at a preclinical stage and effective methods of intervention. As I told you, the specific interventions involved in secondary prevention includes early diagnosis and adequate treatment. Early diagnosis and a prompt treatment preserves health as most diseases diagnosed early can be cured without residual pathologies and patients can return to full health rapidly. This level of prevention also aims to prevent the spread of disease to other individuals and limit the expected disability to prevent potential future inactivity and dependence. Screening for diseases within a population or conducting periodic health ex examinations at an individual level exemplifies the secondary prevention. For example, if you take the case of oral cancer screenings, early detection in cancer presents notable benefits as it enables timely intervention, expands treatment possibilities, enhances the survival rates, reduces the treatment cost, intensity. Overall, it increases the likelihood of a cure. Now, when the disease progress has advanced beyond its early stages, it is still possible to accomplish an intervention. This is called as tertiary prevention. To define all measures available to reduce or limit impairments and disabilities, to minimize suffering caused by existing departures from good health and to promote patient's adjustment to irremediable conditions. That is, Tertiary prevention seeks to reduce the impact of established disease by eliminating or reducing the disability, minimize suffering and maximize the potential years of quality life. The modes of intervention include disability limitation and rehabilitation. As I said, when the patient reports late in the pathogenesis stage or phase, the mode of interventions include disability limitation and rehabilitation. So the sequence of events leading to disability and handicap is as given in the slide. Disease may cause to an impairment, impairment can lead to disability and disability can lead to a handicap. To define an impairment, it is defined as any loss or abnormality or psychological, physiological or anatomic structure or function. An impairment may be a visible one or an invisible one, a temporary or permanent, progressive or regressive. And to define a disability, it is any restriction or lack of ability to perform an activity in the manner or within the range considered normal for a human being. Because of an impairment, the affected person may be unable to carry out certain activities considered normal for his age, sex, etc. This inability to carry out certain activities is termed as disability. And as a result of disability, the person experiences certain disadvantages in life and is not able to discharge the obligations required of him and play the role expected of him in the society. This condition is termed as handicap. To define, it is a disadvantage for a given individual resulting from an impairment or a disability that limits or prevents the fulfillment of a role that is normal depending on the age, gender and social and cultural factors for that particular individual. Let us see with the help of some examples. If you take the case of an accident causing loss of food as an example, here loss of food is the impairment. And due to this impairment, suppose the person is unable to walk or do his daily routine, the inability to walk is a disability here. And due to this disability, when that person is not able to keep up with the job or get unemployed, it is termed as handicap. Here you can see the loss of anatomical structure is a loss of food, that is the impairment, where lack of ability to perform the activity is the disability. And when it comes to a stage where the person is prevented from doing his normal role, it is the handicap. Let us see for another example. Suppose a person, person X or Y, loses tooth due to dental caries or otherwise any periodontal disease. Here the loss of tooth is the impairment. The inability to pronounce certain words clearly due to this loss of teeth is a disability. And if with the, this disability, if the person cannot socialize or not able to discharge the obligations required of him in any ways, it is termed as handicap. I hope with the examples the concept of uh, disability impairment is clear. The next mode of intervention in tertiary prevention is rehabilitation. Rehabilitation has been defined as the combined and coordinated use of medical, social, educational and vocational measures for training and retraining the individual to the highest possible level of functional ability. It includes all measures aimed at reducing the impact of disabling and handicapping conditions and at enabling the disabled and handicapped to achieve social integration that is the active participation in the mainstream of the community life. There are different types of rehabilitations namely medical rehabilitation, 
vocational rehabilitation, psychological rehabilitation and social rehabilitation. Medical rehabilitation is a restoration of function. For example, giving danger to an endangerous patient is a medical rehabilitation. Whereas, restoration of personal dignity and confidence is a psychological rehabilitation. For example, educating the same patient, motivating the same patient to use the danger effectively is a psychological rehabilitation. And vocational rehabilitation, it is the action of restoring the capacity to earn a livelihood like making the patient capable of getting a job after rehabilitation. And social rehabilitation is the action of restoration of family and social relationship that is making the patient ready to fulfill the role required of him by his family and society. Now, let us have a quick recap of what we have discussed so far. We have discussed various levels of prevention namely primordial, primary, secondary and tertiary prevention. Here primordial prevention focus on prevention of emergence of risk factors and primary prevention focus on prevention of emergence of disease and secondary prevention focus on prevention of emergence of complications and tertiary prevention focus on prevention of emergence of disabilities. So, to conclude, as you all know, prevention is always better than cure and as we have discussed, prevention can be achieved in, in any stage of disease and healthcare providers need to prioritize the implementation of preventive care services. Investing in preventive care, implementing various preventive strategies can play a crucial role in disease prevention and it can contribute to the well-being of the individuals as well as the community. Thank you.